Micah chapter 2. And we're dealing with Israel and Judah. The sin. I mean, God hasn't written to the people in the Bible how great you are, because they're not. And there's one thing we learn from history is man does not live, learn from history. We ought to be taking the Bible, we ought to be studying the Bible, we ought to see what God, God's say is on sin. And we've got God's people, the Jews, We've got the world, Sodom, Gomorrah, Babylon, Nineveh, and all the nations. Rome. we got what God deal with Christians. There is nowhere, no non-example of the Bible of what God's added to towards sin. He says, woe, unto, woe to them that devise iniquity, sin, illicit sin, terrible sin, crime, get even. You know, the funny expression is, oh, do unto others as others done unto you. Yeah, that's out of the Bible, but that ain't for the church age. That's the law. And work evil. Now, evil is that word. It, it can be a sin or it can be a consequence of sin or it could be sin and evil. Smoking tobacco and drugs products is an evil, is a sin. Lung cancer, frying your brain, is the evil as a result from smoking tobacco and drugs. Now you may have somebody who's never smoked, never done tobacco, never done drugs. And they are a person of secondhand smoke. Now they didn't do the sin, but they get the evil their own. A baby that is born addicted to drugs because the mother in the pregnancy did drugs. The mother sinned and has consequences of evil. The baby didn't sin and has evil. Upon their bed, when they're getting ready they're going to sleep and rest, and they're thinking about how could I get even? How can I do this to Joe? How can I deceive? Just outright desire to sin. When the morning is light. They practice it. So it's not just thinking about it. They put it in order. They put it into be. Because it is in the power of their hand. They have the ability to do it. We are in a time today. 2022. There's someone probably right now. You know if I get a gun. And I get enough weapons. I load it up. And I go to this building. I go to this event. I go to this thing. And I load it up. And I carry. I can go bang, 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 we just had the 4th of July parade where somebody opened fire on the people in the parade. We've had people go to church and somebody's coming with a gun. Bang, 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 bang. We got governments out there. They think about evil, wicked things. The President of the United States, 
Okay, well, the the, 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 the United States Supreme Court said Roe versus Way is in the garbage. Yay! I'll sign executive order protecting abortion. And then two, two, no, two or three weeks ago, yeah, we won. All right, all the messages in the church, hallelujah, the bells ringing, ah! America, you know, we kill babies and all that, blah, blah, blah. And then July 4th weekend, oh, how great America is. Wave the flag. Well, God bless America. What are you going to preach this Sunday when the president signed orders? Hey, you can protect women who are going to get abortion. How about we just preach the gospel? How about we just preach thou shalt not kill? How about we preach thou shalt not covet? How about thou shalt preach thou shalt not commit adultery? How about we go through all the Ten Commandments? And I'm going to say it, I don't care, uh, but what's the Southern Baptist going to say? They can't open their mouths because they got zipper trouble too and they hit it. Don't tell anybody. Until it was leaked out. The Catholic, the Popes can't say nothing because they, they've been having sexual relations with the with the altar boys, just move them to another church. Oh, oh, don't say anything to that to that preacher that had sex with the sixteen year old on the floor. They, the churches can't say nothing no more because the churches are involved in the sin. But we'll go to education. You mean that this teacher that's flaunting her her pregnant belly that she got pregnant by one of her students? You mean the teacher will take this kid into the closet? You mean the teacher will take this child home or take it to the child's home? Hey, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And then you get up in the morning and you do it. It's in the schools. It's in the churches. And the churches are involved. Easter's coming up. What kind of great message will I have that I won't offend anybody and hopefully get some good offerings? Huh? What? What kind of laws can we make that we can get advantage over the people? And they covet fields. I want your fields. That was Ahab. Naboth's fields. And I wonder if this is why this is written. And take them by violence. Honey pie, Jezebel said, Oh, hey, have you, you just wipe your tears. Put your royal garments on. Have yourself a little lunch. I'll take care of it. And she orders, Let's put neighbors on high. We'll have a deacon weekend. That right. We'll have a Mother's Day Sunday. We'll have a Father's Day Sunday. We'll have those people who can eat all the hot dogs. We'll have those people who can play the piano. And we'll have this, you know, these people day and that people day. And we'll have happy birthday to all those who are born during this month. And we'll have all the happy anniversary of the people on this month. And then... And take them by violence and houses. Intimate domain. That's the government taking over of your property and you have no say. Jezebel took over David's property by having the man killed. And then she goes home. Hey, David is dead. Good news. Honey, you can go get that land. And Honey Pie goes over and gets the land and Elijah shows up. And Elijah says, that husband, you're charged with the murder, and the husband didn't do nothing, but he's in charge of his wife. And take them away. You know what they were doing in Micah's time? They were evicting people so they can get the land. How many farmers lost their farms? Now there's a concrete parking lot. How many people were, were their place where they could afford had been taken over by, well, we're going to name it now, 
it's luxury. We're going to name it condo. We're going to name it, and then they just raise the money up by a name. The places stay, stay the same. It hasn't gotten any bigger, but the rent has gotten higher. Isn't that what we supposedly left England for? Isn't that what supposedly the Revolutionary War is? You know, we don't want to be taxed on the tea. But we've been taxed on everything else. So they oppress a man, make his life hard. You, I mean, you got today, you got a person, they only got 20 hours, you're making them work 40 hours. There's only one person and three cash registers, and you got that one person working three cash. Listen, I've seen it. I watched the video where there's this one person working at a pizza place. One person, and they're taking care of everybody. And getting one, one man's pay. Listen, I worked at what? You're here to take care of the customer. You're here to make this product. You're here to serve that product. You're here to do the drive through. You're here to clean the bathroom. You're to, and you got one pay. And you're Christian. Well, you know, all oh God in favor of, of our constitutionary government and how our government and the ways of, of our plan and how we can underpay the employee as the employer can get rich and great. It's all capitalistic. And you can find it in the Bible. The Bible says you're supposed to give fair wages. The Bible says you're supposed to pay your employer every night. I mean, you want to go running over there, men ought not to wear what pertains to a woman, and a woman ought not to wear it. But that's Old Testament law. I can go over to Old Testament law too. Say, you're supposed to pay your employer every night, and you're supposed listen. You're not supposed to get a lawyer and sue for a billion dollars. You're supposed to have, you know, as time as you are in the hospital bed, unable to work. That's the only time you pay. You know, to do that. Get rid of the tattoos. That's that's the law. Let's put a battlement around your house. That's the law. Get your eyes off your secretary. That's coveting. That may be adultery. Lord forbid that goes on in the church. So they oppress a man in his house. His house. Now see, this is where words in the Bible. Now, let's go over to Acts. Now shalt be saved in your house and thy house. All my house is going to heaven. Woo. Don't we? No, no, no. Okay, look, let's do this one. Don't we have such a great church house here? God bless us in this Sunday morning. This there's some people who actually think their church is going to go to heaven with them. I'm talking about a building. That great property and everything they got is going to go with them in the rapture. I mean, you got a guy to do the grass, you got a guy to do the billboard, you got everything. I mean, you tell them they're going to get rewards. I've been in those churches. The house is the people in the house. Even a man and his heritage, his family, that, that was Naboth. Naboth was completely right when he told King Ahab, hey, Ahab, this, this property belongs to my family. That's what the law said. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, uh oh, God steps in. Behold, against this family. What family? <laughs> I think he's talking about Ahab and, and Jezebel. But the ones that work iniquity, maybe your government, maybe your Bidens, maybe your drums, maybe your bushes, maybe your Reagans, your Washingtons, your, your Thomas Jeffersons, your Clintons. Name them all. Your Pelosi's and, and your Reeds and Put all the names of the government and big business. They, all they care is about the money.
God says, I'm against the family that does that. Do I devise an evil? Behold, against his family, do I devise it? God said, okay, listen. It's not written yet. But the Bible will write one day, Paul will write, Be not deceived, God's not marked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You may think you're getting away with it, but the Bible also says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. You don't want the God of creation, the God of Calvary, the God of all, the almighty God Jehovah, you don't want him at the day of reckoning. Because the mercy may go to the person that you swindled, deceived, oppressed. Because you didn't show mercy. You're going to look for something that you didn't give. Scripture says, I will extend mercy to those that give mercy. Well, God is cruel and mean. That's because that's how you were. From which ye shall not remove your necks. And that's the yoke. Like they put on the ox. Jesus said, come on to me, all your heavy laden. The context of that verse is the Sadducees and the Pharisees had put such a burden on the people of religious law and rights. Did you wash your hands? You can only go so far that you broke the Sabbath. We strain at the camel, or however that verse goes, at the gnat, whatever it is. And Jesus says to them, Come to me, I'll eat your burden. You know what it is today? You know, today for salvation is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the way of salvation today is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and this should be saved. You want to be a disciple? Well, I mean, you got to leave your father, your parents, and leave your own self to be. A, it's hard, but I mean, you have a freedom today, even after salvation, to, to serve God or not to serve God. A religion will say, "Well, if you marry that person, you know you you don't belong to the church. You got to marry outside the." the the altar or whatever it's called. You know, if you don't give money to us, if you don't believe as we believe, you don't dress like we dress, you don't tell, uh, you don't do what we tell you to do. That's religion. That's putting the bond on the necks of the people. And God says, listen, hey, I'll wait till the day I put a yoke on your neck. And that one that comes to me seeking and believe in me, I'll set him free. You, no, forget it. Neither shall you go haughtily, prideful, for this time is evil. Listen, this describes 2022. This is evil. Somebody in, in, in a room somewhere of the media is saying, well, how can we scare the next? All right, let's get all the details on that, and then we'll go for it, and we'll scare everybody. Oh, we got this great company will help us? Hey, it'll give them money and help us, and we'll sell newspapers and we'll sell products. Let's do it. See, the thing by most of all this is there's money. There's a book in it. May not be legal. It may not be right. It may be very hazardous to people. If I can make money. 
in that day, pay attention to that expression, shall one take up a parable against you, and a lament, and a doleful lamentation, sadness, pity, like Jeremiah wrote about Jerusalem, and say, we be utterly spoiled. We've had everything, everything we earned, everything we got by deception. We lost it. You're not going to hold on to it. He's got all the money in the world. He's got all the money in the world. And then he dropped dead and he lost all the money. Now he's in hell. What? Well, you know, I, and there, there's been some rich people, and even my, they've been buried in their cars. They're in Lamborghini. One guy was buried in a Lamborghini, and another guy, I mean, they, go dig it up, it's still there. Oh, honey, we're going to go to the museum. And they got an Egyptian, they do? Yeah, pharaohs and all that. And you know that's to show you? Look at all the stuff we got out of pharaohs, too. Pharaoh didn't take it with him when he went to hell or heaven. There's the mummy kitty. There's the mummy wife. There's the mummy children. There's the, the sinopricus. There's the golden stuff. There's the land. And there, he didn't get to take it with him, did he? Come see the mansion of this great American entrepreneur who died in such and such. This is his, his. This is the room where all his books and where he studied. This is the room where he ate his meals. This is where he slept. This is his living room. This is where he he greeted people, came and visited them. And where is he today? And where's all his riches? He's probably in hell. I don't know. And all his riches you're looking at. Museums and, and, and uh, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, historic preservation is to remind you history, you can't take it with you. I remember when my wife Lisa died and I went to go do the coffin and all that. The guy told me, he, said he pulled up. He pulled out this little drawer. Here's a little drawer you can put keep safe in. He even has a key in it. Once you seal it, nobody... Why? She ain't gonna have a need for it. Why put a lock on it? You mean somebody could steal it? He has changed the portion of my people. How has he removed it from me? There are people out there today and yesterday and tomorrow. Everything they got, they got by deception. They got by lies. They made laws. They thought upon their bed, how can I get? That's where King Ahaz was when Jezebel honey came in, wasn't he? He was on his bed. If I make up this law, if I do this, I can get, I can do. And God says, okay, wait till I step in the picture. And then one day, death comes knocking and it stays. Evidently, the firstborn in Egypt had a very great deal with the Egyptians. Because the Bible says there was a cry that night like there was never been in Egypt when every firstborn was found dead. Okay? Come on, Pharaoh, get all your bricks. Come on. What's your bricks going to do for your firstborn child? Come on, baker. Bake all the cakes and, and all the great cupcakes and whatever you had. Come on. What's it going to do for your child?
to turn it away, he has divided our field. You know Arlington National Cemetery? I'm going to say partial land. At least some of that land. I'm not sure of all of it. That belonged to Robert E. Lee. The government stole it from Robert E. Lee. Look it up, check it out, read the story. Why are you places? The government's gone in there. Well, you can't do it because we'll make it a national park observatory. What's that mean? The government, I mean, the people of the government can't have it. But the government can have it. You see, it's amazing how the government will make laws for the people to be illegal. But when the government violates its own laws, it's not illegal. In America, you can go to prison. I've known a couple people going to prison for check fraud. And yet every day America writes a check. Every Social Security check. Every check to every military personnel is a bounced check because they ain't got that money. We're going to give everybody stimulus. That's check. We're bounced checks. Therefore, thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord of rope by lot in the congregation of the Lord. Now, we talked about lot, you know, the short straw, the black ball. Here is something they, the, the court and whatever they did to value out of opinion a decision. See, you got a farmer or you got disciples. A farmer's like, okay, well, Lord, and he's praying earnestly to God. God, do I plant corn this year? Do I plant green? What do I plant? Because I don't know tomorrow. I don't know what the weather's going to be like. You're my God. And he'll do something. Looking for God to save the corn, the green beans, whatever. And when those disciples got together and said, Lord, we got two men here. And the Bible says they voted. And they raised their hands. Yay! No, 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 no. It didn't say that. They said they cast lots. Now, I don't know how they did it with two men. I don't know if there was a white ball and a black ball. All right, put you in there. Whoever grabs the white ball, you're in. I don't know. All right, here's straw. Whoever grabs the shortest straw. I don't know. Or one, two, three, scissors, cut your paper. Okay, I don't know. That's a proper... Biblical, if I can use the word gambling. And it's not, a, actually, it's a gambling for a farmer's life if he chooses the wrong crops. I mean, if you've got a good, godly farmer, he's going to somehow trust God to be, hey, I need a decision here. Prophesy ye not. Say, they to them that prophesy. Uh, you remember, what was that prophet's name? Amos? Amos, get out of here. Go back to Judah. Don't, practice, don't preach here in Bethel, the king's chapel. Remember that? Guess what they're saying to Michael? Get out of here. Shut up. Oh, they wouldn't say that today. You want to come down the streets of Daytona Beach? You want to look at the videos? When the cops come and the cops shut me up, I walk away because I don't want to cause a problem to call my lawyer. The lawyer says, you're right. I go back next week and I and I preach and I do what I've been doing. And they call the cops again. And every Saturday, <coughs> 911 gets phone calls about a guy preaching, screaming at the people. 
And we don't have enough police for the, for Daytona, but we got to send three police officers for the guy preaching the gospel that he does every single Saturday. And he causes no trouble, he causes no problem. And what's the main thing? He's too loud, we don't want to hear him. And I've had them suggest to me, why don't you go over there? I think they would need to hear it better. Why don't you go over there? Why don't you do it inside your church house? I had, and I, I had a person of authority, how much authority I know, in the city of Daytona Beach, connected with the, with the, with the mayor of Daytona Beach. That guy offered me, and he says, if you will leave this farmer's market, I'll get you anywhere you want in Daytona Beach. He says, Sly, what would you say to that? If it sounds too good, there's a bucket. I said, I'm staying right here. And the pastor of the church said, you're stupid. And then he turned around and offered, hey, if I get, everybody's going to pray. Everybody's going to get saved. And we'll give you the hot dogs and hamburgers. I told him no. He said, well, you're not at the farmer's market no more, but I had six good years. I'm still in the public ministry for the Lord. And they shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. What's the shame? How about the members of your own church ridiculing you because you're sitting out front with a sign or even preaching to the people. You're out there and it's been raining. You come in, you're soaking. Is it raining? Uh, your own brethren of the church that you belong to. How about, it is hot as anything in Florida. Is it hot out there? Yeah, I had a guy stop, pull over and brought me a big bottle of ice cold water and a sandwich. Zephyr Hills water. That water is delicious. I had a woman one time at a, at a Dunkin' Donuts come over, give my daughter and I water. She didn't realize my son was far, but gave my daughter and I water on a summer day in New England. That's not as hot, but it's hot. I had another guy stop, ask me if I had water. I showed him I had water. He goes, okay, just want to check, make sure you're okay. Thank you, sir. I had another guy come up, hey, anything you want. You want water? You want to sit here? Whatever you want. I said, oh, okay, I got water right here. We talked, tried to straighten him out a little bit, and I, I hope I did. And he took a gospel track and went home. Somewhere. I haven't been offered a bottle of water by my church. No one's come out of my church. Uh, you know, it's really hot out here. It's raining. Are you okay? Can we get you anything? That's the shame. It'll be their shame when they end up before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. You mean you didn't help my servant? And thou that art named of the house of Jacob, Israel. Usually when Jacob is Jacob in the Bible. Uh, that's the bad side. Israel, when he mentions Jacob, it has Israel. Okay, that's the good side. Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? The narrow way of God. God's so strict. You can't have fun no more. Man, I have fun sitting there. People are jerks. You say, how'd you learn that? Sitting there serving the Lord. There's nothing funnier. There is nothing more hilarious than have somebody come up to me, fight me about the Bible. And when I, somewhere in the conversation, how often have you read the Bible? Oh, I don't read it. Long way, go play with the kitties, will you? 
Are these his doings? Of all the troubles and problems, all the earthquake, all the COVID-19, all the shooting, is this God's doing? No. It's your sin. It's your violence. It's you rejecting God while all this is happening. Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? It's all mocking God. I, mean, I guarantee you, some of the Christians, does that really do any good to sit out there and hold the time? How many people tune it to you? Sometimes I wave and they'll do. Sometimes I'm just sitting there and my arms hurt. I wave so much, my arms hurt, my arms fall asleep. I've sat there and waved and couldn't wave no more with my neuropathy. I'm like, I want to wave, but my hand doesn't want to do it no more. And I've had people too. Do. I'm just sitting there holding a sign for Jesus. And somebody said, Amen, by tooting. Even of late, my people, Israel, is risen up as an enemy of God. Yeah, that's the church today. He pulled off the robe with the garment from them that passed by secretly as a man averse from war. I mean, you know that man in the suit, all fine and dressy? Could have got it at the thread store. That nice car he drives around in, man, he could be paying. He may not even be paying for it. He may be late on the payments and getting ready to be repoed. And clean. The women of my people, oh boy, here we go, have cast out from their pleasant houses, their fancy houses. From their children have they taken away my glory forever. They don't care about their children. They're not serving God with their children. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. And they're making fun of men like Micah. And Jeremiah. And Amos. And Paul. Paul said to the Christian, To the Christian, Have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? That was written to Christians. In my own church and churches I've been in, I've been a laughing. I know. Hey, they laughed at Jesus. They laughed at Paul. They laughed at Peter. So I guess I'm in good company. Arising, depart, and get out of here. For this is not your rest. And what you'll find in the Jewish people in the book of Hebrews, written to Hebrews. Who would Hebrews be written to? Christians. When? H-E-B-R-E-W-S. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-S. -S. S T U P I D. I guess when Paul wrote the book of Romans, he was writing to the Polacks. I mean, the rest is the land. The rest for Israel is when you are in the land. Your enemies are no longer in the land. It's the millennial rest. You're at peace. You're eating of your fig trees, of your vineyards. You got the temple. You are obeying the law. You are right with God. Jesus is there as the king. Of That's the rest. The Christian has no rest. The only time the Bible speaks about a Christian sleeping is when he's dead.
because it is polluted. The land, the, the heaven of Israel, that's their heaven, is the land that God promised Abraham, Isaac. It's been polluted. It's vile with idols and images and Catholic and Mary worship. No, it's not Mary. It's got Esther. It's got Tammuz. And then we read all that already. It's got altars. It's got come forward, come pray to our altar. Come and welcome to our altar. You got sunrise service. You, you got Baal and you got Asterisk. You got Baal and you got, you know, lucky stars and you got the Aries and you got the Virgo and, and you can't do this because this star says that. And oh, look at a. Uh, uh, uh. That's a pollution. Of the land of Israel, God's people. It is the pollution in the church today. That the church says, I'm rich, I'm wonderful, I'm great. Oh, how great. How great we are. No, the song is how great thou art. And God says, you're poor, miserable, naked, wretched. Because you're not going to have no reward. You're not going to have no crown. It shall destroy you. Even with a sword destruction. Israel. The Assyrians are coming. And Israel will not ever get back. They have not gotten back to the land yet. And they won't be officially really designated and looked to until the 144,000 in which Dan and Ephraim are not even named. They're not named into the millennium. Judah will go back, Ezra and Nehemiah. But look at their history. And in 70 AD, Titus comes in. And they haven't had a temple there yet. They're going to get a temple, but it ain't going to be Jesus. It's going to be the Antichrist's temple. And you've got the tribulation period. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood did, did lie, okay? This is a man who's lying to you. Like Satan does. Now watch this. Let's go further. Let's go further. Let's go further. Let's read the scriptures. They're not read. I will prophesy unto thee of wine and strong drink. You know Episcopal Pagans in the Catholic Church use a strong drink? And they will give you a lecture. Maybe in Latin. There have been cults with miracle. I can't think of them. Kool Aid. That killed everybody. You wine and dine me, I'll prophesy on you. I'll give you lies. I'll give you falsehood. Friend, that's in some of the churches today, Baptists included. What do you do with a man who's been in a pulpit all those years and he's had sex with a 16-year-old? In his office. Been lying. Been falsehood. Been deception. Been adultery. Fornication, coveting. When you when you break one commandment, you practically broke them all. He shall even be the prophet of his, of this people. There's a guy up there in your church. He's lying to you, and you love him. Oh boy, is that 2022?
You want to go tell tele evangelism? You want to go Baptist churches? I get these people, I just love my job. Nurses will say that. Uh, educators will say that. Even priests. I, I will say, okay, what if they told you they, they will not pay you for 30 days? Well, I, they, well they, evidently you don't love your job because if you loved your job, you would still do it. Well, that's ridiculous. I'll say, well, what have I been doing? Well, you've been preaching to the people. You know, I'm usually out in the street and I'll say that. Well, how much do you think I get paid? I don't know. How much is your church paying you? My church doesn't even want me here. You want to call the pastor? He doesn't want me to be here. I don't get paid for doing what I'm doing. I'm doing it for the Lord. I've been doing it five, six years. I don't get paid for sitting and holding a sign inside the road. I do it for the Lord. The Lord will pay me one day. I guarantee somebody's out there. Well, you know, the church that it's paying him. My church don't want me to do it. They probably ridicule me just as much as you're ridiculing me. But that liar, he'll be the prophet of the people. I will. Surely assembled old Jacob. All of them. Alright, this is the second advent. The millennium. I will surely gather the redmen of Israel. See that? There are some liars out there. Verse 11. God's all finished with Israel. To the uttermost. Thessalonians. Oh, what's he saying right here? I will put them together as the sheep of Basra. Uh, John chapter 10. As the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall, the midst of their fold is in the land. They shall make great noise by reason of multitude of men. Rejoicing. Celebrating. Dancing. The breaker has come up before them. That's somebody breaking down the wall. They have broken up, there it is, and have passed through the gate. They broke through the gate and are gone up by it. Their king shall pass before them. I wonder who that is. And the Lord Jehovah on the head of them. I wonder who that is, Jehovah Witness. That's the triumphant entry through that gate that's been barred, that's been sealed. I forget what the gate's called. That's only going to be open when Jesus comes. That man of verse 11, though he's, our, though he's a television evangelist today, though he's in the Baptist churches today, that's the Antichrist. Sword destruction, verse 10, is the tribulation. Look at that order. You think Micah knew there would be a church age, there would be a tribulation, there would be a man called the Antichrist, and then be, I don't think Micah knew anything. 